Here in Elgin, a village about 45 minutes outside of Moncton, people gathered on a beautiful fall day in October to release hundreds of mature salmon into the heart of the Petticodiac River watershed. The inner Bay of Fundy population of Atlantic salmon has declined so much they're considered endangered. The salmon are being transferred from this container truck behind me into smaller uh, containers in pickup trucks. One's pulling in right now as we speak. And later this afternoon, uh, the fish will be released uh, into the waterway a short distance from here, um, following a uh, ceremony led by a local Mi'kmaq elder. In the 1980s, wild salmon populations were hit by a significant decline throughout the Atlantic region, especially the inner Bay of Fundy population, which is listed as endangered under the Species at Risk Act. Blamu is the Mi'kmaq word for salmon. The relationship between wild Atlantic salmon and the indigenous people here in New Brunswick is profound. Amlemgug, or Fort Folly First Nation, is a Mi'kmaq community in southeast New Brunswick. It's at the forefront of an effort to restore the species of migratory fish. The significance in the Fundy Salmon Recovery Program for my community of Omlongo First Nation or Fort Folly is paramount. Um, the salmon has always been a really important species to, to all of us as Mi'kmaq people in New Brunswick. And it just so happens that our population is the endangered one, so it's no longer a part of our traditional diet. It's, it's not as prevalent as it should be in our way of life. Um, our salmon are the, the endangered salmon, the inner Bay of Fundy Atlantic salmon. So if we were to want to be able to fish salmon for our traditional diet, we have to go either to Miramichi or to Oxford, which is another salmon, Atlantic salmon bearing river. So to, to see the, the, the salmon restored in this way, um, how does it feel? I have been a part of the salmon recovery since probably 2002, so I've been in it for a while. And to see these numbers come back into our rivers is nothing that I ever expected. The, the numbers were so far gone that there was no hope, but then there kind of was a spark, and the spark of hope is what made this program what it is today. It's what's bringing our salmon back to our rivers so that someday, my, maybe my great-grandchildren will have salmon back in their rivers as part of their traditional diet. The ceremony just took place to, to bless the water, to, to receive the, the fish. Yes. So right. a water blessing is done um, by our people to give thanks to the water, to give thanks to the blamu, which is salmon, um, to give them a good start, to celebrate that these fish are being put back in their homes to to celebrate the water that takes care of, of all of us and it's a way of us to celebrate that connection that we have with the fish and with the water and I mean it all comes full circle when you put the fish in the water um, so it's it's important for us to remember our ways as well it's another way for us to honor our ancestors and bring them in when we're doing such events is there anything that you'd like to add? Uh, no, just thank you. Just we're all someone's seventh generation. We're always, we always talk about seven generations going forward, but we all often forget that we are also someone's seventh, seventh generation. So the work's been done previously for all of us for what we have now. This week we've returned 860 mature uh, interwave of Fundy Atlantic salmon off of the, uh, the marine conservation farm that were reared there, uh, but collected originally as juveniles from the Petticodiac, and then reared to maturity at the uh, um, marine conservation farm at Dark Harbor Grand Manan. So on Wednesday, just the day before yesterday, uh, 415 were, were brought to us by our partners at Cook's Aquaculture and a Big Transport and uh, Fort Folly's trucks and Parks Canada's trucks picked those fish up from a staging area in smaller groups and they were released at various release sites uh, on the Paulette River watershed. And we've got 400 uh, today alone. Yeah, 415 today alone. Yeah, yeah. Great.
So far, these efforts appear to be successful as salmon returns have rebounded in two watersheds in Fundy National Park. People involved in the project also say they're making gains in the watershed of the Petakodiak River, which runs through Moncton, New Brunswick's largest city. That river system used to yield about 20% of the inner bay of Fundy population of Atlantic salmon. What this program does is we collect those those juvenile salmon, they're called salmon smolts, as they're leaving the river to go to the ocean, we collect a portion of them and we take them to the world's first marine conservation farm on the island of Grand Manan. And really what we're doing is we're just protecting them, helping them get through that, that critical marine stage where we see a lot of mortality. And once they've uh, grown to maturity, usually one to two years, as you've seen today, that those fish now go back to their river to spawn naturally. So we're trying to minimize the amount of handling and human intervention. We're really just trying to protect them very, during these critical stages and get them back in the river to spawn on their own. Um, but they're collected from this river. So when they're leaving this river, we, they, we use um, called smolt wheels or a rotary screw trap, it's just a big floating drum. And we collect the fish that way. Um, and so we know that they're coming from here because they're on their way out of this river. Mm -hmm. We know that the inner bay of Fundy population, at least in the 80s before that real collapse, was about 40,000 fish in, in across these rivers. Um, and the Petakodiak River, it accounted for about 20% of that. So this is a really critical river to, to restore and rebuild these populations. 20%? Was, yeah, 20% yeah. of the entire inner bay of Fundy population originator came from this river. So it's really important that this river gets back up and running. Because now it's been reduced to almost nothing, isn't it? Yeah, so the last estimate um, in the uh, mid, uh, about 2012, I think, uh, was about 200 or so uh, salmon left in the wild. And that's, I mean, cr critically endangered to say the least. So we, um, we're really trying to real, re build that back up. So to put 800 back is a huge you know, step in that right direction. And you've already seen some success, haven't you, in the in um, Fundy National Park? Yes, absolutely. So we're um, we're seeing numbers uh, steadily increase there in terms of uh, adult num adults returning, uh, the juveniles being produced, uh, the the positive uh, ecosystem effects. Of, you know, salmon are real ecosystem engineers, and so they're they're responsible for keeping these rivers healthy. Um, so we're seeing those those uh, positive effects there. But we're also starting to see that here in the Petakodiak now with more and more adults starting to come back, more juveniles being produced. And you know, it's not just that these juveniles are being put there, they're born there. So now these are Petakodiak River fish and I think that's really, really important. At least one difficult question remains. What is killing salmon in their wild habitat? Along with overfishing, conservationists often point to habitat destruction due to forestry practices, the damming of rivers and climate change. And some conservationists have long maintained that open net salmon farming also harms wild fish due to factors such as disease and pollution. That raises questions about one of the main partners in the Fundy Salmon Recovery Program, Cook Aquaculture. The 800 mature salmon that were released into the wild this month were raised at the Wild Salmon Marine Conservation Farm in Grand Manan. That's where the fish are exposed to wild ocean conditions to improve the likelihood they'll survive after they're released. The facility is run by Cook Aquaculture, part of a family-owned multinational group of companies. Cook operates under more than a dozen brands and has fish farming and harvesting sites in Canada and around the world. Industry officials dispute criticisms about fish farming, saying their methods are ecologically sound. And they take credit for applying specialized industry knowledge to the salmon restoration effort. Marine salmon farming is in fact the most environmentally sustainable animal production on the planet. It has the lowest freshwater use, the lowest carbon emissions, and ocean <laughs> aquaculture technology is without a doubt allowing us to help address the decline in wild Atlantic salmon stocks here in New Brunswick. It makes perfect sense for us that we continue to apply decades of science innovations to successfully manage the world's first marine conservation farm in Graham and Ann. And I guess, you know, the big question uh, with respect to the wild populations, or a big question, if I may, is what's killing the wild <laughs> populations? Ah, uh, million dollar question. Um, I think, uh, you know, for so long, there were so many factors, and, and I always say it's kind of death by a thousand cuts, you know. Um, you know, historically, most of these rivers had dams on them. Um, there was a causeway, um, you know, there was all kinds in of... In Moncton. In Moncton, right. Uh -huh, yeah. So there was, a, you know, 
uh, intense logging. Um, you know, there's industry, uh, there was fishing. Uh, so it's hard to say if, you know, if any one of those was the cause, it probably wasn't individually, but when you have one thing after another after another, what happens is those cumulative effects start to drive down that population. Um, and with species like salmon, there's a tipping point and once you go past that it's hard to hard to get over it and that's when human intervention is needed to help them get back over that point so they can kind of recover on their own and uh you mentioned uh the the facility at grand manan where the the fish are reared yep um and uh um i you know i know that um uh, that's uh, that's run by by Cook Aquaculture. Um, you know, representatives from from that group were here today, and of course, you know, um, uh, I think that uh, you know some critics will 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 say uh, you know this is one thing that you know may be harming uh, f uh, fish in the Bay of Fundy is the is uh, aquaculture with disease and and whatnot. Um, you know, and the, and yet cook is itself is integral to this project so i don't know what what would you you know what's your take on that uh, i mean this is an industry that knows how to grow lots of lots of fish lots of salmon and that is a critical part of this program is we need to grow lots of salmon we need to rear these salmon to maturity um and so they have been an integral part of this program because they're helping innovate wild salmon rearing in the ocean. So this has never been done before. We're the first to, to try and rear these fish from smolt to addle and put them back in. Um, and so, yeah, we, we rely heavily on their expertise to progress that that field, that science of how do we do this? Um, and so, yeah, they've been, a, they've been a, a, big, a big help in that. Do you think that aquaculture could be harming wild salmon in the Bay of Fundy? No, I don't. Um, yeah, I don't know. Yeah. That's a tough question. One thing for certain is that many critics of commercial fish farming operations want them removed from the sea altogether. Marine biologist Inka Maluski has called for a transition to closed containment aquaculture instead of open net pens. In an email, she welcomed any initiative to restore wild fish stocks, but said this species faces many, many challenges. It remains to be seen if the Fundy Salmon Recovery Program will get the kinds of results needed to restore the endangered plant. For the NB Media Co-op, I'm David Gordon-Koch.